Guys, we've got a super short video for tonight. Um, basically, the very first thing that I did after I bought this truck was go on Fleece Performance's website and buy a map sensor spacer. So I just wanna talk about that a minute and we'll install it as well. Um, so the map sensors are notorious in these trucks for clogging with soot, right? And that makes a lot of sense because they're part of the EGR system. Um, coming across here, your EGR system is gonna be pumping in a lot of your residual soot and the extra fuel and all that kind of stuff that would normally just go right out the pipe is now being recirculated into the system and it's gotta pass right by the manifold air pressure sensor that's right here in the top of this crossover pipe, right? Um, now the good thing is, is that we can go ahead and just move that away and out of the system, right? So it's not an airflow sensor, right? It's an air pressure sensor. It's a pressure transducer. So it does not have to be in the flow of air. It can be pushed off to the side. Uh, so that's what Fleece did. They made the machine this little billet block and it takes its place here on the crossover and then the sensor itself can just connect into the back. So I'm actually really curious to see what this sensor looks like. This truck has just shy of 90,000 miles on it. I don't know how many times this has been cleaned, if it's ever been cleaned at all. So I'm curious to see just how disgusting it is. All right, so this is a super simple install. So the first thing we're gonna do is pop the connector itself off. So it's got this little white tab. You push that straight back and then you push down on the tab while pulling back on the connector. Two hands, there we go, there's the connector. And then it's a 10 millimeter socket to get this sensor out. Wow, that's disgusting. All right, so if you can see that well, hopefully that's focusing there. That is absolutely just caked in junk. There's no way that we're getting a good pressure reading out of that sensor. All right, so now that the sensor itself is out, we put the O-ring here onto the block and we're gonna go ahead and get that located down into the right place here. Make sure it goes down in the hole. And they supply a uh, Allen head there, so it's a five millimeter. So we'll suck that down. Make sure that's in good shape. That is aluminum, so don't go too crazy with it. So now we seem to actually take the sensor and plug it in the back. Now we'll take our sensor, actually put a little bit of oil on that O-ring just to lube it up a little bit to help it slide in better. And there we go. Snapped into the back and we take the original bolt here and we'll install it back into the back of the, back of the new block. And frankly, you could probably do this in either order. You can install the sensor into the block and the block onto the crossover pipe or vice versa like I just did here. Either way is probably fine. Tighten it up. Once again, that's aluminum. Probably don't need to go ham on it. And that's that. The connector just goes back onto the sensor. Push the white tab down. You're good to go. And that's that guys, it's super simple, super basic. Uh, it does not take more than five to 10 minutes to install. Now, I don't know if this is like a, a must have kind of thing or not. It seems like a really good idea for the $75 or so that it costs. I don't see why you wouldn't do this, um, but I can't say that this is gonna stop any other issue from coming up, but it seems like it would at least stop this thing from being able to build up with soot over time. Uh, but we will find out over the next 50, 60, 70,000 miles. We'll have to check back in on it and see. But other than that guys, have a great night.